Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin. I have good news and bad news about today's story. The good news is, is that we're approaching the grand finale of this series of stories about Winella assembling the components of a wand to rescue Fairyland. The bad news is, I'm afraid today's story ends in a bit of a cliffhanger. But fortunately, you won't have to wait a whole week. The exciting conclusion of Growing Elder will air on Wednesday. I hope you enjoy the story. Winella sat at her desk, looking at the six things laying there. She had only one thing left to complete the list that the tree had given her. She had to bring the tree laughter. She thought about it for a few minutes. At first, she thought maybe she should just go get her book of elephant jokes, and she could tell a few of the jokes. But then she thought that she already knew all the jokes, and so she couldn't make herself laugh. Who was she going to make laugh? Lynn? Hmm. She thought about it, but she had never heard Lynn laugh. She needed someone she was absolutely sure she could trust. Someone who could make her laugh. She wolf. thought about it for a few minutes. And the first person that she thought of was Flip Flop. I was thinking more of the tickling wolf. Well, she did think of the tickling wolf. But although she knew he could make her laugh, she was not absolutely sure she could trust him. She was pretty sure she could trust him. She wasn't absolutely sure. Flip Flop, she knew, could make her laugh and she knew that she could trust him. After all, he had fought his own Frost Fairy when he fought Frostbite. She knew with certainty that he was no friend to them, and he was Flipperty Gibbet's nephew. So, any member of Flipperty Gibbet's family she knew would be loyal. And so, she carefully packed the other six things into her backpack, and then after checking the backyard carefully from the roof for goblins that might be watching, she went out to her treehouse. There, just as a precaution, she got the two mushrooms that she and Joey had taken from the goblins when they had gone to Candyland. And she put those in her backpack as well. When you weren't using them, they shrank down to be just little mushrooms about the size of your fist. And then she got onto the Cat's Paw Highway and turned around three times saying, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway. Take me where I want to go. And then she went very fast. Now, she was going all the way to the Elysium in the South Pole. And so even though she was going very fast, it seemed to take a few minutes to get there. You mean... She was walking there? She was not walking there. She was taking the Cat's Paw Highway there. But soon, she found herself standing in the middle of a perfect circle of green, surrounded by great white cliffs and snow drifts. Cliffs drifts. I just made a lot. Cliffs she, drifts. Yes. That really is too. She stepped down off the Cat's Paw Highway. So, she stepped off the Cat's Paw Highway and she looked around. She saw a few other cats wandering around the Elysium, but she did not see Flip Flop. So she walked over to the first cat she saw and said, Excuse me, have you seen Flip Flop? And the cat said, It's that time of day when he always walks the perimeter of the Elysium to check and make sure that all is well. He usually starts on the north side and walks clockwise. So you should be able to find him. Thank you, said Winella. And she began to walk toward the very edge of the Elysium, keeping an eye out for Flip-Flop's familiar form. And he went counterclockwise. So if he was walking clockwise, then she would meet up. Right. And before very long, she saw him up ahead. He was stopped and he was staring at one particular little snowdrift. Nothing really looked peculiar about it to Anella. But as she walked toward him, she saw him suddenly leap into the snow, and when he came up, he had something that looked 
like a penguin, except it was completely white, and he had it by the scruff of its neck. He quickly jogged over to a pool of water in the Elysium and dropped the white creature in, where it dissolved in a puff of snow. Wow, said Winella. Flip-Flop looked up. Winella, he said, how nice to see you. What was that, said Winella. A sanguine. A sanguine, said Flip-Flop. What are they, said Winella. They are fairy creatures that serve Frostbite, the frost fairy who's always making trouble around here. This one must have been sent to spy. Oh, said Winella. Okay, well, I've come to tell you something. What is it, said Flip-Flop. Well, said Winella, I need somebody to make me laugh. Well, sure, said Flip-Flop. Let me think. Uh, why are elephants big, gray, and wrinkly? Flip-Flop, said Winella. I told you that joke. Oh, he said, you're right. You did. He said, well, let me think for a second. What do you call a cow after it's had its calf? Not right now, said Winella. I need you to make me laugh later. Later, said Flip-Flop. What's going on? Well, said Winella. She looked around carefully. She didn't see anyone else around. She said, can you keep a secret? Of course I can, said Flip-Flop. Is it a funny secret? Not really, said Winella. And then she whispered to him. She whispered to him the story of how she had become the guardian of the seed. And Flip-Flop said, you mean it wasn't destroyed? No, said Winella. It was just a trick. And now the tree has given me a list, and the last thing on the list is laughter. So I need you to come with me and make me laugh so that the tree can make the wand. Sure, said Flip-Flop. Let me just get a couple things. And he began to walk back towards his house at the center of the Elysium. As he started to walk away, Monella heard a sound behind her. She turned to see a second sing one bursting out of the snowdrift where Flip-Flop had caught the first one. It started to flap its wings. Flip-Flop! yelled Winella. Flip-Flop spun around and came racing back towards the Sanguine. He leapt for it, but it got too high in the air before he could get there and went arrowing off into the distance. Oh no, said Winella. Do you think it hurt us? We have to assume it did, said Flip-Flop. It's going to go straight to Frostbite. And once Frostbite knows... He's going to go tell Jack Frost. We've got to get out of here, said Winella. So Flip-Flop so Flip -flop ran for the cabin in the center of the Elysium. He grabbed up his bag, and he and Winella turned and raced toward the Cat's Paw Highway. They jumped onto it and spun around three times, saying, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw. Stop! They stopped turning. They looked around them. Theodore was standing behind them. The Liberty Gibbet has sent me to tell you that the Cat's Paw Highway is under attack suddenly by goblins. You must not take it. They will capture you. You must do whatever you're doing another way. They heard a strange sound and looked up to see a flock of sanguins coming in. Go, said Theodore. I will tend to the defense of the Elysium. What are we going to do, said Flip-Flop? How are we going to get out of here? When Alice said, hold on a second. She reached into her backpack and got out the two mushrooms and tossed them on the ground. Quick, she said, sit down. Flip-Flop looked at her like she was crazy. She just said, ha! Ah and sat down on her own mushroom, reaching under to grab the handles, and it began to float in the air. Seeing what she was doing, Flip-Flop copied her. His mushroom grew to fit him, and then they both were floating in the air. Squeeze the handles to steer, said Winella, and she went shooting up out of the Elysium just as the Singlins began to arrive. She looked back to see Flip-Flop right behind her. The Singlins tried to follow, but the mushrooms were far too fast. <laughs> flew off into the night sky. As it got darker... Night? As it got darker... It was night time when you went? It was evening. It was evening. Uh, evening is at night time. No, it's getting darker. As it got darker, Winella began to look around 
There, she said, second star to the right. They both turned their mushrooms toward the second star to the right and accelerated straight on towards morning. And tomorrow, I will tell you what happened when they got to Netflix. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. Your reviews and personal recommendations are the main way that new listeners find the show, so thank you for spreading the word. I'd love to hear your feedback, so feel free to get in touch via email or social media, which are listed in the show notes. Until next time, I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. Thank you.